Uh-oh, used too much power last night. What you need is a battery just for camping. Make that next camping trip super and fit a dual battery system. Here's what you'll need. For this, we'll use an AGM battery. They're versatile with a decent lifespan, safe to mount inside your vehicle and reasonably priced. You'll need a battery box to house your battery, anchor points to secure your battery, a DC charger, two circuit breakers or fuses, a short power lead, 50 amp connector, split tubing, plenty of cable ties and heat shrink, electrical tape, a selection of cable lugs, a roll of 2mm wire and a pack of 5mm screws or bolts. You'll need a length of red heavy duty power cable and about 1 meter of black. The thickness required depends on the amps of your DC charger and the length of the cable you're using. The instructions supplied with your charger will help you determine the cable diameter required. In our case, it's a 5 meter length of 8mm diameter wire. And while we don't doubt your fingers are super handy, you'll need some tools as well. Wire cutters, wire strippers, a battery drill and drill bits to go with it, electrical test light, multimeter, a basic socket, spanner and screwdriver selection, a heat gun, soldering iron and some solder, a lug crimper and a sharp knife. Let's get into it with step one, mounting the battery. Have a think about where you'd like to fix your second battery. Look for an out of the way space where it won't be knocked about. You've found a spot, super. If you're lacking suitable tie down points as we are here, place your battery box, mark up and drill some holes. Then fix those tie down points nice and firmly. Pop your battery in the box, connect the terminals inside the lid, then close the lid and strap your battery down. Now step two, mounting the charger. For the DC charger, you need a nice flat mounting surface where it won't be smothered or knocked about. There must be plenty of space for ventilation and it should be as close to your new battery as possible. Out comes the drill again. Fasten it firmly with bolts or screws, then we're off to the engine bay to mount the last item. The circuit breaker must be as close to the main battery as possible. Locate a flat, easy to access surface, then, well, you know, the drill. <clears throat> On to step three, main battery wiring. Before you start playing around here, don't forget to disconnect the negative terminal of your battery. Measure and cut a length of your heavy duty cable from the positive terminal to the circuit breaker. Use the lug crimper to firmly attach a lug to each end. Then fit a length of corrugated tube and finish it off with some heat shrink. Leave this disconnected from your battery for now and use cable ties to run it neatly to the circuit breaker. Some circuit breakers have a specific direction of flow so check this closely before fixing the terminal in place. Fit a terminal, tubing and heat shrink to the remaining cable and fix it to the circuit breaker. Slip corrugated tube over this wire and follow existing wire looms towards the nearest firewall grommet. Use plenty of cable ties as you go. Step 4. Piercing the grommet. This can be tricky, so it deserves its own step. You can cut the corrugated tubing here, it doesn't need to go through the grommet. If access is easy, a slit with a nice sharp blade might be enough to get through. If this isn't working, a stiff piece of wire like a coat hanger may come in handy. Use lots of electrical tape to fasten a good length of your cable to the wire, then poke the wire through and pull this from the other side. A squirt of silicon spray will make this much easier. Whichever method you choose, be super careful not to damage existing wires around the grommet. Now for step five, it's time to wire your second battery. If your vehicle has a smart alternator, you'll need to reconnect your battery and locate an ignition source under the dash. Solder your two millimeter wire into this. If you're not sure about the intelligence of your alternator, Google is your friend. Route this to your DC charger along with the power cable. Corrugated tube is optional, cable ties are not required. Once you're at the DC charger, you can cut off any access. This is where your short runner black cable fits into the job. Crimp the included lugs into your red and black cables, then poke these into the connector until they lock in place. Join this connector with the DC input on your charger. The other end of that black cable must be earthed to the car body or chassis. Locate a nearby bolt, route your black cable and cut it to length. Attach a ring terminal and fasten this behind the bolt. If you have an ignition wire, cut and solder this to the small trigger wire on your charger. You'll need another circuit breaker or fuse between the charger and the second battery. If you're using a 50 amp connector on your battery box, you only need flip the lid and swap the 50 amp fuse for a 30 amp. The remaining plug is for solar input, ready to go when you're ready for a solar setup. It can be cable tied out of the way for now. Finally, step six, testing the system. Pop your head back under the bonnet and fix the new power cable to the battery, then refit the negative terminal. 
To prevent discharging your starter battery, the charger will only begin charging when the engine's running. So go ahead and turn that key. Now you can set the battery type on your charger. As we said earlier, today we're using AGM. The charging lamp will illuminate on your DC charger. If you like, you can probe a power outlet with your multimeter to check that the charge voltage is as specified in the manual. If you'd like to check the charging current, pop your clamp meter around one of the DC output cables from your charger. Now get out there and enjoy yourself, knowing your engine will start in the morning. Find detailed instructions and more videos to help you make it super at Super Cheap Auto's Super DIYs.